new videos every day. Hello, my name is Hope Young, and I am the owner and founder of the Center for Music Therapy here in Austin, Texas. In today's video, we are going to show you some of the ways that a music therapist would use music with people in a hospital, in a educational setting, in a clinic, or even in home health care. So I'm going to start with the most common perception of music therapist. Um, most common perception is that we do a lot to, with emotions, with depression, with anxiety, and that is true. There's about 5,000 of us in the United States, but actually of those 5,000, only a few of us are working um, in psychiatric or emotion with emotional needs. But that every human being responds emotionally to music. So again, as a music therapist, to use music for non-music outcome, you would see me first assess a patient and find out what they like in music, their preferences, their um, associations. And then the last key bit is, well, exactly how are we wanting to use this music for what non-music outcome? So on the East Coast, if you went and got your training in music therapy, you're gonna get a lot of psychodynamic-based music therapy training. You can have it in other schools as well, but it's very strong on the East Coast of the United States for psychodynamic. Mm -hmm. So if I walked in and you were in a hospital and you were there because of suicidality and you had just woken up most unhappily in a psychiatric intensive care unit and you had just tried to kill yourself and you were not real happy that you survived, I would walk up and I'd be finding out about um, you. As we open up with music, most people, when they're depressed, are experiencing a few things. Once an empty tin man, the depression is so severe, it's, they describe themselves like a tin man and they can't even feel anymore. Or they're very angry and anger is so much what they feel there's nothing else they can feel, and they're turning that all the way inside themselves and becoming suicidal. So one of the things that I'm very careful to do is not to play a happy song to a depressed person, and that's called the ISO principle. You start where the person is. So if the person is depressed and sad, I'm going to start with sounds that are usually in a minor key something sad, something usually slower. If they're really angry, I might start loud and banging and start where they're at. Throwing things up against the wall to music works really well. Um, banging a drum, but I won't do that to you on video because it doesn't come off as well on video as well as if you're participating in it. So let's go with sad. A lot of folks, um, even when they're depressed, are still turning a lot to a spiritual or trying to connect with the spiritual. Many folks with severe depression say they don't feel connected anymore to themselves, a God of any kind, but they're still thinking about it. So spirituals are often a point that if the person is just sad and doesn't want to talk, I might just start playing, again, in a minor, slow key, something not very invasive and more in their style. So I'm gonna say that you like kind of a bluesy, jazzy sound. It's one of your preferences. And pray that you're not a Nine Inch Nails fan only and making me rock. And we might sing something like this to see if you relate. And it's something in the song that you might relate to or has any meaning to you. I'm just a poor Fair and strange, traveling through this world of woe, but there's no sickness, toil or danger to that bright light. Letting the music connect to people and not having to say much is a very powerful thing. From this point on, it's the patient. And I may not play another note the rest of that session and let them sit quietly and just connect with me and talk about themselves and I listen. 
we may instead take this song and I may allow them to put their own words into it by starting. I'm just a, and ask them to fill in the blank and I sing it. And then I ask, does that feeling feel right? And they usually say no or yes. And I will change the music and become their instrument for them. We can record it using the technology now, having a Mac at bedside and let them have that or let the experience stand just as they remember it. There's so many ways that when you open with that, you open a way to communicate and connect with people that's nonverbal. They don't have to say a word and you can experience feeling. And oftentimes that Tin Man feeling starts to go away and they start to remember what is really human. Sometimes so much emotion can come out as a music therapist. I try to use the music, well, as much as good therapists with more years of experience, use the music as a container to contain that emotion for them. So it doesn't feel like they're gonna be overwhelmed and the wounds get just opened up over and over again. So with the music, I can let it grow and build and do some musical and then let it resolve and close and leave them in what we call a closed position. Or if they're about to work in depth through trauma recovery with a therapist, leave them open as the other therapist or doctor comes in and does a lot of the deeper work. What I just showed you is really just a drop in the bucket of the tool chest that music therapists have at their disposal every day working with humans and healing with music. So if you like more information, please go to our website, centerformusictherapy.com. Give us a thumbs up and leave lots of comments as well as please subscribe to the channel because I hope this is just piquing your interest. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel. I'm just a with every stranger traveling through